Thanks so much for joining me once again on Jody Productions videos. I appreciate those who come and view, whether you're new or returning. Your time and support is greatly appreciated. Let's have a look. Today's video is looking at uh, fundamental basics in physics. That is the difference between distance and displacement. So first of all, some terminology. Distance is a scalar quantity that refers to how much ground an object is covered during its motion. Whereas displacement is a vector quantity that refers to how far out of place an object is. It's the object's overall change in position. So a quick recall, remember that a scalar quantity has magnitude and a unit, so for example, 10 kilograms, whereas a vector quantity has a magnitude, a unit, and direction, such as an acceleration of five meters per second squared to the east. So first of all, let's consider a vehicle that starts and then travels to a finished position 100 meters to the east. Off goes the vehicle. To calculate its distance, we want to find out how much ground has that vehicle covered. So from that visual, we can clearly see the distance is 100 meters. So that is a quantity, meaning a number, and a unit, as in meters. That's a scalar measurement. Let's consider now its displacement. Now the displacement, again, is how far out of place an object is. We're comparing its finishing position from its starting position. So in this case, the vehicle has been displaced 100 meters to the east. There's a quantity, 100 meaning a number, a unit of measurement, meters, and a direction in this case, to the east. This is a vector quantity. So displacement is sometimes described by the saying, as the crow flies. So the scenario of as the crow flies is literally the shortest distance from the start to the finish. So visually, the crow flies directly from the start and travels to the finish in the shortest possible distance. So that represents a displacement of 100 meters east. It compares its finishing position from that of its starting position. However, in this scenario, the vehicle has taken a journey of 120 meters, not the shortest route from the start to the finish. The distance is a scalar quantity of how much ground an object has covered. So the car traveled a distance of 120 meters. There's our quantity and our unit, it's a scalar measurement. Its displacement, however, is looking at how far out of place the object is. So in this scenario, it's been displaced 100 meters to the east. It may have taken a 120 meter journey to get there, starting from this position and traveling along to the finishing position. However, it's only been displaced 100 meters east, comparing where it finishes from where it starts. Here we have a quantity of 100 unit of meters and a direction towards the east. It's a vector quantity. And again, if we looked at it from as the crow flies, that's taking its starting position and going directly to the finishing position. So that displacement is 100 meters. Let's look at a couple of scenarios to calculate the distance traveled and the displacement. So we're looking at an athlete competing in the following events. 100 meter sprints, 200 meter race, and the 400 meter race. Let's get into it. So the first race we're looking at is that of the 100 meter sprint. So the 100 meter sprint starts on the straight section of the track and finishes 100 meters in the easterly direction. So a person runs, lovely graphics, 100 meters. So again, a reminder, the distance is a scalar quantity that refers to how much ground an object has covered during its motion. So the answer to this first part of the question, what distance has been traveled by the athlete? The runner has covered a total distance of 100 meters. In terms of displacement, we're looking at how far out of place an object is, comparing its finish from its starting position. So the crow flies 100 meters towards the east. So here's our reference of our direction, north is straight up, so east is to the right. And the run has been displaced 100 meters to the east. Question two, what is the distance traveled and displacement of an athlete competing in the 200 meter race? First of all, the 200 meter race has a staggered start based on the fact that different athletes have to travel a different distance around the, the curved radius, of this section of the track. And of course, we finish all together at the 200 meter mark finish line. So off goes the racer. So the distance again is how much ground an object has covered. So in this case, the runner has covered a total distance of 200 meters. Now to work out the displacement, we want to find out how far out of place an object is comparing its finish from its starting position. So as the crow flies, that would be our displacement from the start to the finish, shortest possible distance, very different to that of the journey around the track. So to make this calculation, we're going to use a little bit of trigonometry to work out both the magnitude and the direction of the displacement. To do so, we have to add some track dimensions. Research suggests there's an internal radius of 36.5 meters at the curved end of each track. That represents a height of the inner track of 73 meters. So from our start position down to the 
opposite parallel straight section will be double the radius. It's 36.5 plus another 36.5, giving us a total distance of 73 meters. And the length of the straight section of the track is 84.39 meters exactly. With that information, we can work out this unknown displacement represented with the blue arrow. So let's consider this as a right angle triangle. So first of all, let's work out the magnitude step two of the displacement. We can use Pythagoras' theorem as we have a right angle triangle. The hypotenuse, the larger length of this right angle triangle is labeled C and the two shorter side lengths are labeled A and B respectively. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem to calculate an unknown side length from a right angle triangle. So the displacement represents variable C, side length A can be represented with 73 meter length and side length B is represented with the 84.39 meter length. So we can take the square root of the sum of those two squares and we find the displacement is 111.58 meters. So there we have our displacement of 111.58 meters. Now step three, we need to calculate the direction of the displacement. That is the angle theta. Let's use the tan function. So we've labeled our right angle triangle now. Relative to this angle, we have an opposite side length. And relative to this angle, we have an adjacent side length. As we know, tan of the angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. Therefore, to find the angle theta, our unknown angle, we'll use the inverse tan function. So the inverse tan of our opposite over adjacent, when we substitute our values of 84.39 meters for the opposite side length and 73 meters for the adjacent side length, produces an angle of 49.14 degrees. Putting this all together, we now know that we have an overall displacement of 111.58 meters at an angle of 49.14 degrees. Now that is in the southerly direction, inclined towards the east. So the runner has been displaced 111.58 meters in a direction southerly 49.14 degrees towards the east. Question three, what is the distance traveled and displacement of an athlete competing in the 400 meters? Starting at the 400, a complete lap, and back we come. Once again, a staggered start. Now again, distance is a scalar quantity that refers to how much ground an object has covered during its motion. So in this case, the runner has covered a distance of 400 meters. In terms of displacement, that is how far out of place an object is, we can see that the runner, and in this case the bird, starts and finishes at exactly the same position. So this runner is not displaced at all. So we'd state that the runner has been displaced at zero meters. There's no need for a direction in this particular vector quantity, as there is no displacement. You've been watching a Juddy Productions video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, then please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.